I apologize, everyone. We had, uh, once again, a uh, intense uh, caucus, but uh, here we are. Rose? Okay, roll call for the City Council meeting of Wednesday, October 16th, 2019 at 7.30 p.m. Mr. Winarski, Ms. Allen, Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Jones, Mr. Potowski, Mrs. Schaaf. Mr. Witherspoon is on by phone. Please rise for a moment of silent meditation and pledge of allegiance. Uh, Mr. President, um, I would ask that we remember all of those in our community that are less fortunate than we are uh, in any and every way. Um, ask that we remember the Senate family, uh, uh, former mayor Joseph Senate's mother passed last week. And so uh, very fond memories of her. I was a much younger man, like 13 or 15 years younger, and she used to pinch my cheeks at all the pancake breakfasts. Um, her and her, her wonderful friends in the community. So uh, she was definitely a matriarch and a blessing and always had something positive, yet stern to say when necessary. Uh, but we want to acknowledge that family, um, educators and public servants in our community, and we want to recognize her as a gift. And finally, we ask that our God and Creator give us the wisdom, the courage, and strength, and the proper information to make the best decisions for the citizens of the city of Houston. minutes from the City Council meeting of October 2nd, 2019 and bills for payment on October 11th and October 18th, 2019. Ms. Allen, Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Jones, Mr. Potowski, Mrs. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. I believe we have a uh, presentation tonight by Mr. Jones. Uh, for a tribute to the uh, Mercier's men's baseball team, who has been representing our fine city for many of years now, and once again had an outstanding season, but I'll let Curtis uh, I was gonna say, are you presenting? Mic. Would you like to come down, <laughs> Mr. President? <laughs> um, uh, again, as, as Mr. President Winarski had mentioned, um, congratulations to the Mercyhurst University uh, baseball team. Uh, Mr. Witherspoon, uh, ideally was going to make this presentation. I am a probably a pretty short second to Mr. Witherspoon's uh, six foot seven stature. Um, but any group and any individual that represents with excellence, uh, represents with high quality of product or performance, it is worthy of recognizing. And so uh, the men's baseball team for Mercer, so those that are here, I don't know who's representing, uh, if the coach or any of the players are here, please come up at this time. And I apologize, not knowing faces and knowing individuals who you are. Uh, let's just give them a round of applause. They're representing. <laughs> so I just want to share. It's a pleasure. Um, come on around, you guys. Uh, and I want to say this too. I'm a Mercyhurst lady. I'm a product of Mercyhurst, not the university. I was the one young kid up on the hill that used to get in the college player's way in the library and stuff. Uh, so we do, again, thank you all so much. Whereas the city council of the city of Erie wishes to pay special tribute to the 2019 Mercyhurst University men's baseball team for earning their second consecutive NCAA Division II World Series and third trip in the last five years. That's, that's a round of applause. That's stellar uh, performance. Again, thank you for representing us. And so we have some graduated players and, and Coach Spano is, is here. And so uh, we want to allow him to say some words and to kind of introduce the other men that are with you. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, City Council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, unfortunately, we had a, uh, a guest lecture tonight. A lot of our team could not make it. It was a mandatory thing for them. But um, I do have a couple of our coaches, um, Anthony Santoro, um, Jimmy Latona, and Charlie Spano with me. Um, just real quick, just want to thank our President uh, Michael Victor, Vice President Laura Zirkel, and our Athletic Director Brad Davis. Um, most importantly, just want to thank everybody um, 
the greatest thing about winning the Atlantic Regional Championship and going to the World Series was to be able to do it um, as the host, to do it right here in Erie, um, in front of our fans, in front of our community. Um, the compliments we received about how the teams were treated, um, our local media just did an outstanding job, and we're just we're just so proud to represent Erie everywhere we go. So just thank everybody so much for all the support, and uh, just really proud of our young men. Thank you. Brings us to repository sales. Do we have anybody here this evening regarding a repository sale? Anybody here this evening regarding a repository sale? Hearing none, that brings us to citizens to be heard. Please step forward, state your name. Good evening, Council, Mayor, Solicitor at all. Um, Adam Trot, 531 West 6th Street, second floor. Uh, two items I wanted to um, touch base on quickly. One is uh, the, uh, the proposed complete streets project on West 8th is, uh, Bike Erie hugely endorses that. Um, we're glad to see, like one of my board members said last night, uh, at the Complete Streets first presentation that it's like someone switched the light switch on on these issues and now we're seeing a lot of activity and uh, I can't stress enough how important it is that not only to make the streets safer but it was hinted at last night when you enliven the street you bond your neighborhood, you make it more cohesive, you give it new life, and you support businesses in your neighborhood because now they're getting the sidewalk traffic they didn't get when the streets were oppressive, badly maintained, unsafe, fast. So the traffic calming, the, um, the community uh, fortification of that type of thing, I'm hoping that the West 8th Street shows how this will help everywhere in the community. Um, and we're also uh, glad to see how Mill Creek wants to attach from Pittsburgh to the peninsula, because Bike Erie, West 8th, from Peninsula to State Street is on our subway map. It's one of the routes we want to see happen. And so this is a big piece to it. Um, I hope that uh, the Erie Urban Bike Trail, the green garden part of it gets as much uh, support from City Hall as West 8th Street is getting. Um, uh, two other items, um, one, uh, the Lerda, we all know how quickly the Lerda was rushed and you know, I was at the homecoming conference and I saw firsthand how important it was for the city to tell that investor crowd that they got the LERDA. So I understand the impetus for accelerating that process to get that, that win and that attribute to share with these investors. That's a good argument. And I, I don't know why that argument wasn't just made outright that yes, we're rushing it because we want to have it for these investors. We want to give them that carrot to, to attract investment. Um, however, now that it's in, um, for goodness sakes, it's not done. We can keep improving it. And at that same homecoming conference, it was said 
protection of existing homeowners that are struggling would be a great enhancement to Lerda. So please, let's work on that loop, the proposed long-term occupant, owner-occupant protection program. Let, let's make that happen, and let's, let's truly make Lerda a, a full city program. And then finally, the, the Lerda is just one of many instances where things seem to be rushed through, and when there's due diligence offered from the public about, well, can we check into this and that, and those people are besmirched or, or elbowed or, you know, stay quiet, you're, you're, you're making problems where we don't need them. That's not petty squabbling, that is due diligence. And I'm hopeful that City Hall will have the confidence and the self-esteem to say what we want to do can endure due diligence. So please, when, when people challenge, that's not obstruction. That is a way for you to prove what you're trying to do meets the test and the standards it has to meet because you affect the city with everything you do. So I'm just requesting that we be more tolerant when people challenge and answer the challenge. Don't try to cover it or ram through it. Answer it. That's the best way to deal with challenges. So that, that's, that's what I requested. Meanwhile, complete streets. Thank you. That was a great presentation last night. Thank you. My name is Roxanne Benson. I reside at 747 East 22nd. I'm here again about the uh, establishment known as Energy at 759 East 22nd. Um, I was I didn't know about it, but my daughter was supposed to have a meeting with her and a couple other neighbors with Michael Outlaw, supposedly yesterday, and nobody from this uh, mayor's office showed up for that. So we'd like to know why that happened. And it was in the paper or on email or something that it was said that uh, a head of a city department had to ask for an ordinance to be looked into and maybe written up. And we were never informed of that. So if that would have been the case, then let the public know what has to happen before ordinances can be made against something or for something. And even though there's been no shootings for the past two weeks, we are still being woke up to loud music yelling, horns honking, when the traffic gets backed up. It's getting really out of hand. Uh, just to run down what happened the last two weekends, on, a, on the 6th of October, there was five to seven officers outside, pretty much outside of our house with two males detained. Uh, they gave one of them a breathalyzer test, two parole officers, which I've never seen show up happen. Uh, they left about 1.45. And then there was a lot of traffic and noise uh, about five minutes later. And about 3.15, there was like 30 or 40 people that ran in a hurry out of the club toward the inter east, toward the uh, intersection. And normally when that happens, there's usually gunshots going off shortly after or a big fight. Um, it's getting to the point now where it's an ev every weekend occurrence. Didn't matter if last week, this past weekend was a a colder weekend or not. We're having more warm weather come. They're gonna be out and they're gonna be bothering us again. Uh, early Sunday morning, there was an SUV blocking my neighbor's driveway. Whoever was driving stayed in her car for like 20 minutes until four or three or four other girls come up. They were chit-chatting and yelling and laughing and carrying on for like 20 minutes or so. Then they all got out and they walked down to the club. But to us and all of my neighbors in the neighborhood, even the 800 block is getting bothered. And I live in the 700 block, and I'm sure 21st Street is packed with cars. I don't know what the mayor's office or the, uh, there has been increased police patrols the one night. I was really shocked at the amount of uh, police officers that drove by, but whatever they're, trying to do, it's not enough. It needs to be somehow closed down 
because one of these times it's going to be one of us getting hurt or killed, which would be, that might be the fast track to something getting done and done quickly. We're just tired of it, and you guys are probably tired of hearing us down here, but we're going to keep coming, and we're going to keep doing the phone calls and the emails and the try to get meetings with the mayor, mayor's office, but it's getting to the point now where, I mean, you guys got Swanee's closed down. I know that went on for years, and they finally got that. The difference between that and ours is that Swanee's had a liquor license where Erie, or the Energy Club doesn't. So they're not prone to any of the normal laws that go with a liquor license or whatever kind of establishment you want to call it. But I'm getting tired of my grandkids not being home on weekends because they're so afraid to stay home, we got to send them out outside our neighborhood and outside the city. So please get something done or let somebody know what's going on and what else we can do. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Margarita Dengel, 1948 West 33rd Street. And I'm speaking here for the Sisters of St. Joseph Neighborhood Network and the residents that live in the neighborhood where the Energy Club resides. And my intent is again uh, to I invite you, the City Council, to look at the situation and figure out a win-win situation for all people involved. Again, I'm saying it involves young people who are looking for a space to have entertainment at uh, maybe uh, unusual hours for uh, most of the residents that live in that neighborhood and the neighbors that want to sleep at night uh, uh, as the noise is mostly between one o'clock in the morning and four o'clock in the morning. So I would say um, uh, the energy club is one problem. Uh, we have the rumors lounge opening uh, there's the talk of another uh, club opening up on 21st and Parade Street. Uh, is this a trend that now instead of opening bars, clubs will be opened? And uh, is it a problem or is it, uh, could it be a problem then that the clubs don't need a liquor license, which costs a lot of money, uh, but then they are also not responsible for the alcohol that apparently the customers bring in themselves and they are not selling. Uh, is there a, a situation where clubs um, are not responsible for their customers because apparently uh, facilitators uh, having a party there and so they're bringing their own customers, uh, which means there must be a lot of loopholes in the ordinances that we have right now to control the situation and make it a peaceful environment for residents. So as we as a city are working on attracting people to move into the city, I'm saying we have to figure out ways how we can uh, keep the neighborhoods at night peaceful and quiet so that people really want to live there. Uh, because I don't know if you can imagine the situation being woken up at one o'clock in the morning with people screaming outside your window in uh, violent voices and you don't know who is the uh, violence is directed towards. So um, ordinances I think are somewhere in the making I hope uh, and whatever we can do as the neighborhood, you know, call on us, we, will, uh, we would love to help. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Freda Tepfer, I live at 1738 West 23rd Street in Erie. I'm a certified orientation and mobility specialist. I'm here in part to support um, the fact that we question the wisdom of issuing an RACP grant to um, the culinary district before the city and the people of the city have really had a chance to weigh whether this is even a good idea in the first place. That's one reason I'm here. Um, I'm here to continue my concern about the lack of the city's enforcement of their own regulations around obstructing sidewalks, both from their work, the work under their contractors, and the work of other people. Um, there's been a 
sidewalk that's obstructed on 12th Street. It's been that way for a long time. Uh, and every day I go past on 32nd from Melrose West, and that sidewalk is obstructed without detectable notification. I see curb cut construction with just flagging up, which is not detectable not notification. The city is well aware of that. They have their own handout, which says that that's not permissible practice. Um, I, I understand we have an active transportation plan, but we need to address some of our inherent ongoing problems as well as just designating bike paths and, and, and doing some kind of nice airbrush things. We need to actually ensure that we have walkable sidewalks during the winter season and all year round and that we have regulations around obstructing sidewalks with cars parked across driveways with encroaching and overhanging vegetation and snow not removed. And this is a quality of life, just as grass is a quality of life. It should be respected and enforced. I'm curious to know now that we have some regulations around LED signage, how to get those enforced, because there are a number of signs going up with Catholic schools where they spell too fast, where they flip and turn, of the Playhouse, some of the other signage in the town, um, the one on 26th Street, over by, um, on the north side of 26th Street over around Emerson. Um, how do we get those enforced? I want to dis express my dismay over the constitution of the steering committee for the active transportation plan. I've been obviously a very dedicated and vocal voice, voice about the need for transportation and for pedestrian and transit in this city. And we did a point to this, the city appointed to the steering committee, a smorgasbord of representatives of various entities and only two non-governmental um, officials or employees showed up at the meeting today, I understand. Were the, were, was the MSRC actually consulted and asked if they were going to regularly send a representative to the meeting? Why did we appoint somebody from outside the city to represent visually impaired pedestrians? Why do we continue to fill committees and commissions and boards without opening these vacancies to people to apply for them? I'm really dismayed that, especially in this particular case, we seem to have filled these committees in a vacuum without really determining whether these are the people who really have an interest in participating in the process. Thank you. Any other citizens to be heard this evening? Any other citizens to be heard? That being said, move on with agenda rows. Ordinances for final passage, Council File Number 16-124, Official Ordinance Number 63-2019, an ordinance closing and vacating approximately 4740 square feet of Wagner Avenue adjacent to 1602 Wagner Avenue. By Ms. Shaw, second by Mrs. Arrington, the Council File Ordinance Bill Number 16-124, and now known as Official File Ordinance Number 63 2019 be finally passed by the city council. Mrs. Allen, Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kwiatkowski, Mrs. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Wanarski. City council passed official file ordinance number 63 2019 finally by a seven, nay zero. <laughs> or less. <laughs> Council file 16125 official ordinance number 64 2019 an ordinance amending part 5 traffic code title 5 stopping standing and parking article 521 parking generally article 523 parking me meters and deleting article 523.99 penalty. 
by Mrs. Schaff, second by Mrs. Arrington, that council file ordinance bill number 16125 and now known as official file ordinance uh, number 64 2019 be finally passed by the city council. Mrs. Allen, Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Jones, Mr. Potowski, Mrs. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. City Council passed official file ordinance number 64 2019 finally by a seven nay zero as amended. Mr. President, can we reach out to Mr. Witherspoon? I imagine he doesn't realize he's not muted. <laughs> Mel? Yes. Your people in the background are being heard by all of council. Okay, we'll try to mute this. <laughs> Old school. <laughs> Council file 16-126, official ordinance number 65-2019. An ordinance closing and vacating a 90-foot portion of East 9th Street immediately adjacent west of UPMC Park for the purpose of creating a left field entrance to UPMC Park and in addition to Erie Insurance Arena integrating the two venues and creating office and retail space. By Mr. Winarski, second by Mrs. Arrington, the Council File Ordinance Bill Number 16126, and now known as Official File Ordinance Number 65 2019, be finally passed by the City Council. Ms. Allen, Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Jones, Mr. Potowski, Mrs. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. City Council passed Official File Ordinance Number 65 2019, finally by A7, nay 0. President, yes. I'd like to pass the balance of the agenda or move the balance of the agenda. I'd like to second it. Do you have any separations this evening? You're going to separate number one? No. Moving the balance of the agenda, Ms. Allen, Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Jones, Ms. Kwiatkowski, Mrs. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. Resolved or by Mr. Jones, second by Mr. Kutowski, resolved by the Council of the City of Erie that the mayor and other appropriate city officials are hereby authorized to submit a business plan and full application to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Office of Budget for Redevelopment Assistant Capital Program um, grant in the amount of $2,500,000 to be utilized for the flagship city development owned by the Erie Downtown Development Corporation. EDDC. Further resolved that the City of Erie is hereby authorized to execute a cooperation agreement with the EDDC for a Pennsylvania Office of Budget Redevelopment Assistant Capital Program project. Further resolved that the City of Erie hereby designates the Director of the City of Erie Department of Economic and Community Development as the official to execute all documents and agreements between the City of Erie EDDC and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania to facilitate and assist in obtaining and managing the requested grant. Discussion? Sure. Can I? Sally. Okay. Um, I am going to explain why I decided to vote in favor of this resolution. Um, and I'm going to talk about a couple of things. One is Dorothy Day. The third, second thing is the October 7th Wall Street Journal story about Erie. And the third thing is the new Adams Family movie. Dorothy Day, a journalist and social justice activist, co-founded the Catholic Worker Movement. Her papers are housed at my alma mater, Marquette University. She devoted her life to helping the poor. And there's a movement among people of my faith to have her canonized as a saint. After I got elected to city council, one of my villa friends sent me a Dorothy Day quote, which I keep in my purse. It says, people say, what is the sense of a small effort? They cannot see that we must lay one brick at a time, take one step at a time. A pebble cast into a pond causes ripples that spread in all directions. Each one of our thoughts, words, and deeds is like that. 
in my role as a city councilwoman, I throw pebbles trying to make the powerful leaders of Erie listen to the citizens. As I reread my Dorothy Day quote today, I thought about the headline in the Wall Street Journal story, which said, Erie hit rock bottom. The former factory hub thinks it has got a way out. The story has a number of inaccuracies. The red brick buildings that the EDDC bought were not abandoned. And I didn't realize that Sherlock's and Park Place were bar biker bars. Did you know that? I found that out in the Wall Street Journal. But the real problem with this story is that it continues the narrative that Erie was, to borrow a phrase from the current occupant of the White House, a s-hole city, and that only one group can save us. I realize that we are being treated as an s-hole city when we got this presentation about the EDDC project two weeks ago. These are the pictures, the second and third slides. Erie does have a lot of problems, but the idea that we are only solving them now with the help of EDDC is inaccurate. We have a whole book here that was written by James Fallows, a 100,000 mile journey into the heart of America with a chapter about Erie. And this is about the people of Erie who welcome refugees, who welcome immigrants, who have done innovative things. Let's not sell ourselves short. It's about the, in my mind, Erie's about the women religious who have lifted the, uh, the city up. It's about Bishop Brock and the Eagle's Nest. We need to reshape the narrative, and now we have an opportunity because we are going to have a seat with what is going on with EDDC. Uh, the Wall Street Journal story says the project, referring to EDDC, is the cornerstone of an effort to reimagine a city once defined by industrial giants such as Hammer and Mill Paper Company and General Electric Company. It does not say that Hammer and Mill Paper Company, which at one time had 800 good paying jobs on Erie's east side, was acquired by International Paper after a corporate raider, Carl Icahn, put Hammer Mill into play with the intention of breaking it up. Should we blame Erie residents for the hideous actions of an arbitrage specialist? There's also a quote in here from Tom Hagen where he talks about Erie. This is what it says. He said he compares the, uh, the city's plight to, I compare it to an alcoholic who has to be in the gutter before he or, see, he or she sees the light. I don't like our city being compared to a, quote, alcoholic although it fits in with the, with the narrative to push people out of downtown, let's get rid of the addicts, let's get rid of the poor people, let's get rid of the senior citizens, let's sell the senior citizen center to Gannon, let's close McDonald's, let's close evict restaurants, let's evict people from their apartments. So even though I spoke up against this um, grant two weeks ago, I've now come full circle to realize that maybe at last we have an opportunity for city council to be involved and for the citizens to be involved. So I'm voting yes. And if the next time somebody describes the city as akin to being an alcoholic, I am going to speak out again and again and again. That's not the city that I wrote about for 30 years at the Erie Times News. That in, in Erie Refocused, Charles Buki calls us a city of ambition. I consider us a city of compassion. And now, finally, maybe we'll be heard. Thank you. Uh, Jim? Uh, I profess that coming into this meeting one hour ago, and I still haven't decided, although I'm leaning one way, but I think there was a a lesson learned today in the caucus room. And I think it should be heard loud and clear that we are, you know, Franklin's been quoted a lot lately about when he came out of the Continental Convention and they asked him what type of government do we have? And he said, you have a republic if you can keep it. Well, we are a republic government, not Republican, republic. And that means that we have a representative form of government. We don't have individual people voting on every issue, we elect representatives. But when those representatives are denied access to information that has been clearly available to other people 
or other legislators, there's something wrong with the system. Council is responsible for passing the ordinance, ordinances. Council sets the laws. Council okays the bills. Yes, the controller has a, a function, and yes, the mayor has a function. But it's council. And, I think, and I'm hoping that council finally gets it in their head that they are important enough to demand things and to use their power, I hate to use that term, but use their power and influence to have a say in what gets done in the city. I don't want to see any longer the comment that I have to read the newspaper, I have to listen to the media to find out what's going on. And I don't care who goofed it up, I don't want to hear about it was misquoted or something. I don't, those things wouldn't happen if there was clear transparency. And I made a comment in the, in the caucus room that my vote depends on a promise made today. And I'm gonna tell the people there was a promise made that council will be in on the decision making. And if it's not, heaven help you on the next vote you ask for my support on. No, this has not been indicative. This is a fact that council needs to be part of the process. We can no longer assume that Harrisburg talked to the mayor and the mayor talked to us. People have to make sure it happens. I don't want to hear any more bill threats, but oh, Harrisburg will be upset. Good, they're upset. I'm glad they're upset. Maybe they woke up a little bit. Because when you read what really happened and how this thing came about, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, not pretty. I'll say that much. And I did my research, because I have some friends in the, in the capital. This cannot be allowed to happen. So if you get my vote, I hope you earn my trust and your trust. I hope, you know, because if it doesn't, it, it's not, it's not going to go well in the future. We got, we got tough decisions. And every developer pretty much has come in here and showed us what they're up to, what they're planning. And if it's such a trade secret, you gotta, I'm going to remind you that we are sworn by oath to a different level of confidentiality than the average citizen or employee at City Hall. We can go to jail for telling things. We can be indicted for malfeasance in office. So let's take this a little serious and let's start disseminating the information so we don't have these last minute debacles at a council meeting because nothing is worse than having something put on your plate one day, two day, 24 hours prior to voting on it. That's not how I work. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Kwiatkowski. Anyone else? President? Yes, sir. Uh, I just want to say that uh, I want to thank the mayor and the staff. I want to thank Mr. Persinger uh, for making this happen and bringing in this type of money into the city to uh, assist in improving uh, our grounds, improving the way folks may, outside folks may look at us. Uh, and it is important that uh, you know that I am voting yes for it. Uh, I've been aware of it. Uh, when you talk to different people at different times, they were aware of it. So I was not left in the dark uh, whatsoever. So my vote is yes. Uh, without a reasonable doubt. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Witherspoon. Rose? All right, roll call. Mr. President, you skipped me. <laughs> Was I not vocal enough? I can change that. I figured you would have been the first one. <laughs> no, sir. I'm That's not right. Okay, just, just briefly, I, I think um, I echo most of what was already said by uh, my fellow council members. I think my I think what I, I think is important, for me what is important, let me say it that way, is that I think that what EDDC is trying to do and doing, what other organizations for profit and nonprofit are doing and trying to do in this community, uh, in particular downtown, because the, you know, the conventional wisdom is if you build the downtown, it'll halo out into other parts of the city. I, I really look forward to the halo, uh, to be perfectly honest. Uh, but I think being a, and having a strong downtown is important. I, I do also think, though, that we have an opportunity to do something that maybe hasn't been done at the same level 
that it's been done in, the, in, in recent history anyway, uh, we have an opportunity to not only use the most challenged of our community, the most impoverished in our community, and the most um, wanting, of, I'll say it this way, of material things in our community to get money for our community, but then those people don't get any of the benefit of what the money, uh, of the money that comes into this community. What do you mean? Um, when you talk about Erie and you, and, and you wanna make a case to get money to improve a community, you have to make a case, right? You have to make a case to say that this is horrible and this is bad or this could, if you give us this, we can improve it this way or to this level or to this amount. And all all that is, is grant writing and marketing and I get all of that and I understand it. The problem I have with it is when it doesn't translate into, again, the communities that are quoted as being the worst zip code in the Commonwealth. Um, where we're talking about individuals with, uh, or community, portions of the community where the educational attainment is extremely low. When we see, uh, as Councilwoman uh, Allen showed pictures, uh, the individuals in those two pictures from those slides, I want to know how much of their life is gonna be spent downtown, but those pictures are used and those numbers are used to get money for downtown under the guides of the city, but it's really focused downtown, which again, I don't have a problem with as long as it halos out. Um, we have an opportunity to say, you know what? We can do better than we've done. EDDC has resources in their network and others, not just in this, not picking on them, but this is the topic of conversation. There, there are resources that it would be wonderful to say, you know what, maybe we don't have to do so many uh, local hires, but we're gonna do that because it's the right thing to do because we have an opportunity to enhance our community. Maybe we don't have numbers attached or percentages attached to minority and business owned, uh, women owned businesses to subcontract or to contract with, but because we're being intentional to raise the level of experience and raise the level of quality of life for citizens of the city of Erie who we're using to get money to come in to support the projects we think are important, we're gonna do it because it's the right thing to do. And, and I, I wanna stop asking the question okay, what's the percentage for this and what's the percentage of that? No, what are you gonna do despite what the percentage is? Because truthfully, a lot of times a percentage is a goal. We need to start making it an expectation and going above and beyond that as the expectation. I, I, I am being preachy on purpose today because it's an opportunity to do something different, something to be transformative in our community. We have a community reinvestment fund. We, we've got things attached to LERDA. I mean, this if we don't do it now, we'll have to wait another 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, and my grandson will be the old council member. My great-grandson will be on council or mayor. And we'll be having the same conversations if we don't, I think, if we don't do something now. That was the time. We have, we, Erie, I don't know if the Erie's ever had this much national press on the high and the low end. Let's take advantage of that. We're the worst for some and a great opportunity for others. Let's take advantage of that. But we have to do something different and something intentional. Representation is not just elected officials, but let's represent the people who feel as if they don't have a voice. Let's represent the people who we're using their disfortune or misfortune to get a fortune. Let's give them some of the fortune, uh, some of the the fortune that comes into our community. Because here's the thing, and I'll, I'll be done with this, even if it's just a perception that it's all about downtown toward the Bayfront, whether that's a reality or not, it's the perception. And perception is reality for people. And we need to change the reality, but we have to be intentional. And I think this project, Many other projects, I know there's some uh, groups in the community that are working to empower and to create systems so that those who are underrepresented in labor unions can be more represented in labor unions and have access to jobs and these family sustaining jobs and these uh, uh, high quality working opportunities. We need to be intentional 
And don't do it because it's a requirement. Do it because it's the right thing to do. Because often the requirements aren't enough. And that's why we are where we are today. I'm voting for this because I think our community can benefit from $2.5 million to help build an infrastructure, to help build and enhance what our city needs to have enhanced. But I'm saying, I'm supporting it, saying I hope we can do something different, not just with this money, but with the other monies and the other projects. And then we have to do it in an, in an intentional way. And I hope that this is the start of something that hasn't been done in this or on this level in a long time. So again, I'm voting for it uh, with my sermon. <laughs> attached to it. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Can I say amen? Feel free if you felt oh. that, brother. If you felt it, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. President. <laughs> yes. I just want to say that uh, as a council person, um, my colleagues very eloquently um, said what is in my heart, too. Thank you. Rose? All right, roll call. Ms. Allen, Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Jones, Mr. Kutowski, Mr. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. That will adopt seven to zero. And then um, we have a uh, wave rules, Mr. President. And this was a late entry, but it's also in conjunction with the uh, RAP key for the city of Erie and the EDDC. Voting on waiving the rules. Ms. Allen, Mrs. Arrington, Mr. Jones, Ms. Kutowski, Mrs. Schaff, Mr. Witherspoon, Mr. Winarski. By Mr. Jones and seconded by Mr. Kutowski, resolved by the Council of the City of Erie, that the mayor and other appropriate city officials are hereby authorized to execute a cooperation agreement between the Erie Downtown Development Corporation and the City of Erie for the Rec P administration and compliance with the common Office of the Budget for the flagship city development project. Further resolved that the city of, Erie by, city of Erie hereby designates the director of the City of Erie Department of Economic and Community Development as the official to execute all documents and agreements between the City of Erie and the EDDC. Mr. President, yes. question. Uh, so this waive the rules, I understand what the process and why we do things, you know, why we waive the, ru waive the rules, excuse me. Uh, why is this a way of the rules? Was this on the previously on the, the last agenda and when they came up with the next agenda or this agenda, it wasn't put on? Like, I don't know why this is a way, because that, what you just, re I'm sorry. Well, I can answer that, Mr. President. Do you want me to answer that? Sure, sure. I just want, yeah. <laughs> um, Curtis, this was not on the agenda. Okay. Um, of course, the original and the first one we read was on the agenda, this however, one. was pulled, but then put back on. Right. And this kind of came along with it, but because it hadn't been present on the agenda, we made it the way it rolls. Okay, so it's not anything additional, it just didn't make it back on once we took it off? And no, no, the first one you voted on, yes. that was the one that had been pulled off and put Correct. back on. Correct, This is that. a separate and additional one, okay. but it does have to do with the rec. I understand that. So my next question would be, what, you, the, what we just waived the rules on and what we are in the process of voting up or down now, is this the first time that this has come and been a part of an agenda? Yes. yes. Okay. So I guess my question is, what it sounded like you just read, we were told that's the normal part of the process. Why do we have to have another? So like they're going to administrate in the city. We're going to, why do we have to go into a... Um, an agreement with EDDC to do the work that comes along with running an Iraq P or administering a RAC P grant? Am I, or am I miss, missing something? And do you have any idea? All I know is this, this had involved, instead of um, the RAC P being administered by the EDDC, it was now going to be administered by the city of Erie? Yes, I, I don't know all of the specifics, but we do not, we have some administrative responsibility. As I understand this motion, we would be the one in charge of it. Also, typically, agreements are, would not be signed by Mr. Groner on behalf of the city. They'd be signed by a mayor or a council representative. Uh, this one is authorizing the director of the Economic and Community Development Office to sign documents. So it would be something that would require a motion and approval by council. So I guess my question is still, 
and respectfully, why is this different than every other grant? If, if what we were told, and it is true, uh, the, the Economic Development Office in the city has direct responsibility to oversee, reaching all the requirements that come along with this state given money, all the expectations and all the, uh, the checks and balances. We were just told 30 minutes, 40, 45 minutes ago that that comes through his office. Why are we signing something separate to say that they're going to do what they already do? I think I'm looking at it. It's actually going to be a little more transparent for council to see this more than the EDC, EDDC, say, signing checks or approving different things. Where, although I still believe that puts us as more of a player in this. I'm, at the end of the day, I don't know that anything's really changed. I mean, I, I, Mr. Jones's issue, I don't know if there's a specific uniqueness to documents that would be signed by Mr. Groner, but their office runs runs the show with all of the, the rack piece. Well, that's what my point. But I, at least from my perspective, I, I, okay. I don't know why it's here, but I don't find this to be anything okay. offensive uh, or concerning from a legal end. Yeah, I don't find it offensive. I find it interesting. Is that we're agreeing to go into an agreement for our city staff to do what they already do. Like, why is this different? Again, it, and that's what brought my attention. That's why it brought it to my attention is because what she, what Rose just read is what we were just quoted that Chris's office does. And so, again, I don't, I don't have a problem voting for it. I just wanted to know why was this unique. And, and Wave the Rules always gets my attention, all of our attention. You know what I mean? Um, again, I, I'm not trying to make things difficult. I just didn't know why this was different. If we were just told less than an hour ago that that's what they always do for all of the RCAP or RACP grants, why would we have a separate Wave the Rules item on our agenda to do what they always do? And will the Finance Department and the Controller's Office still be involved? Yeah, and typically with, well, I shouldn't say typically, nothing would change with regard to approval. Any expense of money or approval of money comes before council. So no, that would not change. I, uh, I gave Chris a call just to find out what, you know, why was the same. Sure. He said this happens with every rack fee. Sometimes it's done at the same time, sometimes it's done a little uh, later, okay. but this has happened with every rack fee so far and will continue. Okay. So that he has authority to well, that's what I was asking because it was I was asking was it attached before when we when we had it on the original uh, the Just original what, it was missed being attached the first time right. normally that's attached okay. to every yes. that, that's that answers my question clearly thank you <laughs> okay roll call Ms. Allen Mrs. Arrington Mr. Jones Mr. Potowski Ms. Schaff Mr. Witherspoon Mr. Winarski and that will also pass seven to zero and that will take us to committee reports, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, before we go to committee reports, I do see a couple new faces in our audience this evening. I was just wondering if anybody out there uh, would like to state where you're from or what you're studying or uh, <laughs> uh, here tonight at our council meeting. You look like a good spokesman. Come on up. Yeah. <laughs> And stay there. Mr. President, let's make him come to the mic. <laughs> it's making it too easy to stay in the crowd, young man. And we'll, whoever your professor is, we'll let them know you should get extra credit or bonus points for standing up. <laughs> yeah, some verification. It's, it's recorded live, so you're good. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, well, uh, we are with Dr. Spiegel's uh, political science uh, state and local politics. And so that's pretty relevant to uh, a meeting like this. And so we're here to kind of learn a little bit more about how city council operates. Um, uh, we're doing a good job of that today. Well, I hope you learned something good tonight. <laughs> but, I, I so. <laughs> but welcome and thanks for coming. And you guys are welcome anytime uh, to our meetings. Thank you, guys. <laughs> uh, committee reports, Miss Allen. Okay. First of all, I want to thank Scott Henry, who's not here tonight, but the head of the uh, Erie Redevelopment Authority, for responding 
uh, wholeheartedly to a suggestion from Howard Bibbs, who Mel Witherspoon appointed to the Blighted Property Review Committee. Howard said he could really use a Blight 101 class, and Scott uh, gave that to us um, a week ago, and I think we're going to do it next month before the Blighted Property Review Committee. So I wanted to thank Scott. I also wanted to thank Howard, and I wanted to thank Mel because Howard Bibbs has been a great addition to the Blighted Property Review Committee, asking a lot of good questions and really helping um, me to um, educate myself about how the blight, blighting process works. Um, I wanted to let people know that there's three meetings coming up um, uh, tomorrow night, Friday, and Saturday. Um, how can we connect Erie to our Bayfront? There's going to be an introduction, uh, presentation, and workshop tomorrow from 6 to 7.30 at the Russian Community Center, which is at 106 German Street. Um, there's a midpoint drop-in session Friday from 4.30 to 6 at Boswick Design, and then on Saturday from 3 to 4.30 an urban design presentation at the Jefferson Educational Society. If you're on Facebook, um, you, you should be able to find more details about this. Uh, Kent State University is helping out with this. This is really an attempt to get citizens um, excited and involved in figuring out how to get that iconic connection as PennDOT moves ahead with, with its uh, plans for the Bayfront Parkway. And uh, I went to the meeting last night. I know Kathy was there for the entire meeting. I got there late, but the uh, biking and pedestrian committee, I think it was amazing the whole chamber city council chamber was filled with people who were interested in that issue. Um, there, there was a man who lives downtown who talked about, it, it, when he talked, I was like, yes, I could identify with that, about feeling like you're a target when you're a pedestrian walking downtown. Nobody pays attention to you. You're just, you're like collateral damage uh, when you try and cross the street. But I am confident that uh, the creation of this task force or initiative, whatever it is, is going to give us some good results to make um, Erie more walkable, more bikeable, safer, et cetera, et cetera. You know, all the things that Adam Trott mentioned when he came up to the podium. And, and Kathy, you can, I don't know if you're going to fill in a little bit more on that, but I was only here for about the last half of that presentation, so I'm done. <laughs> Mel, do you have anything to say this evening? See ya. <laughs> I think Mel left us. Should we tell people where Mel is? He's being honored by the, um, do you have the info there, Jim? Yeah, it was on yeah. my list here. Okay, we just, good. Mel would have been here tonight, but he's being inducted to the New Jersey Athletic Hall of Fame in Newark, Newark New Jersey, tomorrow night, so uh, I don't know why I couldn't have left in the morning, but uh, <laughs> we'll give him a break there, <laughs> but uh, we just want to th congratulate him on that honor and uh, see him in a couple weeks. And I think he said he's going to see some teammates that he hasn't seen in decades, so this is an amazing opportunity for him and, to, you know, pride of our city is also the pride there in Newark. Sure, Ms. Shaw. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Tomorrow evening is a Pennsylvania Human Relations Commission Town Hall. That's Thursday, October 17th from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock p.m. And that's at the Blasco Library. And I did attend the Complete Streets presentation yesterday. And they also did a short introduction at the Planning Commission meeting that I was at on Tuesday. And I am so thankful that this is happening. Last Thursday, I was walking across 12th Street on my way up to Calamari's for lunch. And I had the walk sign. I was in the middle of the street. Someone from behind me on state took a left onto 12th and was speeding at a rapid speed. And had I not been paying attention and stopped at the very last second, I would have been a goner. So um, I am very thankful that this complete streets 
And also with West 8th Street, I visited Fat Lenny's over the weekend and treated my friend to an ice cream. And that is located now on West 8th Street. And anyone who loves ice cream, that's a pretty cool place to go to. I have never been there um, at its new location. I had lunch yesterday at the Oasis Market Cafe. There's a new cafe way in the back that they opened um, just Friday, and I ordered a sandwich that was to die for. I had cucumbers, tomatoes, uh, mozzarella cheese melted. It was real good. Um, so uh, I am a local girl and want those local things continuing. Um, I have lunch regularly too at the 26th and Parade um, ethnic uh, deli there because he does have the best Philly sandwiches. There's a sign on his window and yes he does. I'm, I don't want to be advertising but I'm just saying that I'm a local girl. So what I want to say is um, now that you're um, here is like I just love local things and I don't want anyone working in silos because people are out there wanting to give their opinions. So like I thought yesterday's meeting was good with this complete streets because people got to speak about what they wanted. And I know um, that the EDDC is a private entity and they have, you know, what's going on. but. Just, and I'm glad you know you say you're open. So I want people, of all people, to be a part of what's going on, and all people to be lifted, because I uh, really feel that um, my residentially challenged friends are having a hard time. So please uh, always be aware of everyone and I love Rudy that's up on the Methodist Towers. I watched that go up every day. I saw a little bit about what was going up and I think that it's a wonderful thing. Some people <coughs> said, well, it could be flowers. Why aren't there flowers up there? No, Rudy needs to be up there. He's representing the spirit of the city. That's what we are. We're hardworking people. We're people. All kinds of people. We're people. Like, and that's what I really want uh, Erie to continue to be, this great ethnic diversity where all people are treated equally and fairly. And we are a welcoming city. Like, um, Nick and Carpenter and the administration are working for. And we are all about trying to do better for everyone. Thank you. No report. Uh, brief report, uh, we attended the police pension fund meeting. Uh, <clears throat> things are progressing well with that. Uh, I'd like to thank my colleagues for voting for the park and fine increases today. I think it was misconstrued on the, in the media about what we were doing. All I heard was, you know, we're raising the fees. No, we're raising the fees over a progression of time. So my advice to people out there is if you get a parking ticket, don't sit on it. After 90 days, it's going to increase quite a bit. So pay your fees and get them out of the way. City is faced with a $2.7 million shortfall in uncollected fees. So between the collection agency that we we're handling and these new ordinances, they should go a long way in uh, clearing up that mess. Uh, we attended the, PM, the uh, Pennsylvania Municipal League Conference in Gettysburg, PA a week ago. Uh, it was a good gathering and uh, we talked about many issues from gun violence, funding of pension plans, city finances, 
urban development, and I know Curtis has been with me a on a couple of these, and uh, it's always good to see the people around the Commonwealth, your fellow colleagues, and you know, compare notes. And what I saw in Gettysburg uh, for a little borough was uh, something that Erie could turn into. Uh, it was a good start uh, from the little town that I had been in five years ago. Quite a, quite a different change. So we can do the same things here. I just think we have to be bold, but we have to be transparent, and we have to let everybody be a part of it. And I think Erie's future will look bright after that. And final note, Kathy, you missed the most important thing. What? You were talking about ice cream, right? Yes. Penn State students should have bought us a gallon of that Penn State. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're on the, you're on the clock. <laughs> okay. Kaz, as far as I know, you can get that at Oasis. They had somebody scooping it, but um, so then when summer ended, they didn't have the scoopers there anymore. But I think they still have the ice cream there. So That's good news. I heard there was a rumor. So yes, mine is favorite is the no happy, no, happy no harm in trying joy. to trying to. <laughs> Jones. We're not allowed to take gifts. Well, no, they, no I'm just I'll, pay, I'll, pay, I'll, I'll pay him plus for it. Right, we'll, we'll pay you five cents more than what it's worth because we want to do extra. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this has been a lighthearted yet serious meeting today, and I think it's good because sometimes our meetings are so intense, but they don't have the lighthearted piece to it. Uh, so it's a nice balance today, and I think we got made some great points and we've done some great work, to be perfectly honest. Um, I, in my report, I, I want to just uh, be very clear on my intentions and with my comments. Uh, sometimes when you speak up or speak sternly or strongly or directly, people misconstrue that as not being for something. Uh, sometimes the best thing that you can do is, if you're for something, is to make sure that it can be the best version of the thing you're for. And for me, being able to develop the downtown, connect the downtown with the Bayfront, allowing that to go into all portions of the city, east, uh, west, and south sides of the city, is a passion for me. Uh, and I believe most of, I know most of us, and all of us on this council, and, and others in this city. Uh, but I, I think there are pivotal times when there are certain things that can be done on purpose and for purpose, but it has to be like intentional, right, and directed. Uh, I remember about three years ago, two years ago, I had. Uh, surgery on my right arm and um, everything in my body was going and was working double time and was giving attention to the places that I was hurt the most and so it, it would be silly for my right arm to say you stupid you know like you, you, you know the left arm was broken it needed extra attention there are portions of our community that are broken and need extra attention and so we have to be intentional about that this arm had a cast on it this arm got rested this arm got got itching and so I had to get a hanger and push down like there was a tension that was necessary to meet the needs but it was it doesn't happen unless we do it on purpose and there's a there's an old adage um, in the Bible and in other uh, books uh, ancient books but it says where much is given much is required and there are individuals as well as corporations and businesses that have been given much whether it be through their own ingenuity to have, a, to have a great idea, someone has to put it into practice. If you have a great product, someone has to buy it. So either way, you've been given much. And where much is given, much is required. And I think that we need to take that mindset uh, as we're moving forward with all of the wonderful economic development opportunities, opportunity zones, LERDA, downtown improvement. We have a fund that started with the city through the LERDA conversation, you know, the community reinvestment fund. All these are opportunities to be intentional to be uh, unifying and not divisive and to spread the abundance. We don't have a shortage of money in Erie. We do have some distribution issues though. And I think that if we can recognize that and be intentional around uh, being able to spread that wealth literally and figuratively, I think that we can absolutely make everything that is seemingly not right about our community, we can make it right. Because here's, where, here's what I'll say. You don't have to always do everything for someone Sometimes if you just let them know you care enough and you can see them and that you're intentional about trying to help them, it will inspire them to help themselves. And I think that, th that we have an opportunity to do some intentional work, some inspirational work, and some transformative work in our community, but we cannot do it on accident. And we cannot 
allow things to come through our city that have direct impact and uh, direct impact on the future of our community. And I'll say this again, as I mentioned previously, we cannot allow resources to come into our community based on the difficulties and the struggles and the depravity of certain areas of our community. And then when those resources come in, those communities that help generate the funds don't get any of it in a direct, in an implicit, and in a specific and purposeful way. So uh, I'm for business. I'm absolutely for economic development, but I'm also for maximizing the opportunities that come along with the great level of economic development that we have going on, our, going on in our community today, where much is given, much is required. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Uh, I know we had a uh, citizen up here, actually a few of them, regarding that after hours club on 22nd and Wayne over there. Uh, I did talk to the deputy police chief actually just today to see if any progress has been made. And uh, they are once again monitoring it very closely. There has been two arrests, I believe he said, as well as uh, they do have, we do have an extra unit out from eight to four in the evenings that is paying closer attention to that neighborhood as well. So um, still, there, it, it isn't something easy for a municipality just to close up an establishment, but uh, we are monitoring it. And as long as there's people are legitimate complaints that are going on, the police department and the administration are keeping track of it. Uh, we did have a study session with our fire chief and code enforcement uh, this past Thursday regarding how we can try to make these daycares more safe, sort of being reactive but proactive to the extent that something needs to be done where there's some guidelines, some licensing, some some smoke detectors that work in these facilities where kids are being washed, not only for the safety of the kids, people who are watching the kids, the first responders that may have to go to that facility, as well as the neighbors in that area. So uh, although it comes, it's gonna probably come with an additional cost to the owner of that facility, uh, it's tough to put up price tag on life so uh, we are going to get a ordinance here on the books here within the month this in the month of November and uh, if it needs to be tweaked after that or if we come up with new things that may need to be added to it or if something may be a little too harsh to take off we will do that but we got to get something on the books to get something in place to make these daycare facilities safe. Uh, I want to thank Mr. Persinger. Uh, I've called him late notice a couple times. Uh, he's always responded. Uh, he did come to caucus tonight to uh, answer some questions from our my colleagues here on council. Uh, I do believe we did gain something here in the last two to three weeks with the EDDC that uh, they are gonna be more transparent with us as council, not like they're hiding anything, but just be more informative. Give us that uh, avenue of communication with council to know what's happening in our neighborhood as city council as we're across the street. But uh, with that being said, he's also, uh, we're gonna invite him to a <coughs> orderly update with council members just to see what's happening to, with the EDC and what has been done and what is in the future. So uh, just have more hands-on as a council with the EDDC. And once again, thank you for your uh, cooperation. That's all I have. Ms. Controller, nothing this evening. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, that active uh, transportation plan kickoff uh, last night and today is very encouraging. I think that's going to be a, a really good thing. Uh, also, I think Renee had emailed all of you uh, 
back on October 4th and talk, maybe talked about it last time she was here also that we are looking to hire a new administrative assistant in, in the mayor's office. Uh, Neekin has a health problem. She's going to be out about three months. And when she gets back, we want her to be able to focus on the new American work and the welcoming um, uh, city work. Uh, so uh, that administrative assistant, we hope will be starting uh, early next week. Uh, I think we have an offer out, but we haven't heard back yet. At least I haven't heard. Uh, the, our delegation from Azebo was here uh, a couple weeks ago. They came out on a Sunday, the 29th of September, and on uh, September 30th, we took them around to uh, uh, LeCom. We met, had conversations there, as well as St. Vincent's and Hammett. And then on uh, October 1st, uh, Tuesday, we went to the universities, including Penn State Barron, Edinburgh, Gannon, and uh, Mercyhurst and uh, had great conversations there. They seem really interested in working with us and uh, learning from us. I know from being over there in April, their uh, health care is like way behind ours. And I think they're looking to learn from us, but we wanted to, it's, any agreement we come to has to be mutually beneficial. It has to be something flowing back uh, our, our decision as well. Uh, uh, one of the things they want to do that's kind of exciting, and it's, in, it's just kind of an idea now, but they want to create a a Chinese district in Erie. It would maybe a block that had, that they buy and build Chinese style buildings on. And when their population does a lot of travel, and uh, for instance, about a million Chinese go to Japan every year for vacation. They'd like us to be a vacation destination, also a healthcare destination. So people coming over here on, on vacation, maybe in the Chinese district, if that comes about, and people coming over for health care in their recovery, maybe in there. Again, this is all, it's, it's kind of a general idea right now. There is going to be another group we expect to come over in, this, in December of this year to try to work out the details of, of this uh, arrangement. If that's successful, I think their mayor will come over early next spring uh, and will jointly sign whatever you know, whatever we come up with, if we do come up with something. Um, I want to th thank JP and the Penn State group for, for being here with us, and you stay or stay until the end, too, which is really good. Appreciate that. Uh, a couple things in the last week. Uh, October 7th, I went up to the grand opening of the Tom Ridge Library at Mercyhurst University, and that's uh, really an incredible place. A lot of great information. And, and Tom seems in really good good shape. He gave a great speech there, and I actually heard him at a lunch speech earlier as well that day. Uh, we had a great meeting uh, on October 9th at Strong Vincent Middle School with about 15 of their students, uh, and it was just kind of a chance for them to learn about government, but it was, it was really, uh, I was very impressed. Uh, we were with them an hour and a half, and they were all attentive the whole time, asking questions, and really, really participating, and that kind of gave me a lot of faith and hope in Erie's future. Uh, also, we had a coffee with the cop uh, two weeks ago on October 2nd, and uh, I went down and was there for a while, and that, was, that seemed to be very successful. I think a lot of people got a chance to talk to our police as human beings, you know, rather than as these guys in uniform that they don't really know. Uh, so that was a really good thing. Last thing I want to say is that uh, tomorrow's press conference, there's uh, seven topics that we're going to talk about. Uh, we, we got a half a million dollar Secure Smart City grant for our eight opportunity zones to accelerate the, the, the smart city there. Uh, the Martin Luther King Center is, is going to be there to uh, announce their fire prevention event, which, which is this Saturday over at the Martin Luther King Center. Uh, we're in, in, there's three artists that are coming into town uh, over the next week to, uh, and, and they're basically competing to create the, the entry at Third and State, the entry to the downtown, some sort of artistic entry. The Erie Downtown Partnership is, is the one putting that together, but these three uh, candidates are going to be in town. Uh, the Downtown Fall Fest is this Sunday. I think it's, the, it's, the, it's at the Oasis, and, and the rest of downtown is participating too, I think. First time that's ever happened, so it's a new event in downtown Erie. We'll be uh, honoring the American Pharmacist Month at the press conference. Uh, and also, it's National Lead Poisoning Prevention Week. We'll be talking about that, and I'll be giving an update on LERDA, and I'll just give you a little preview. Uh, we had another six LERDA applications in the last five business days ending today, and it, it's right around another half a million dollars in 
alert us. So that continues to be uh, very successful in moving forward. Thanks very much. Thank you. Attorney Bepta? Just very briefly, I apologize for saying anything, but um, th there's been the concerns about uh, Club Energy and Michael Outlaw was mentioned in his role. I just want to let you know, I spoke to Michael today. He met with the owners uh, along with the SPCP to address some of the neighbor's concerns and address some of the issues. His approach, uh, as I understand it, was more of an educational approach to find out what's going on so that he could address that, but also to try to help educate uh, the owners to become, in essence, more efficient and more effective owners uh, in operating a business. He's hooked them up with some uh, agencies locally that may be able to assist them in their operation of the business so that it's um, efficient, effective, profitable, but yet not offensive. There's going to be a follow-up meeting with the owners and the SPCP, and then there is also, as I understand it from talking with Mr. Outlaw, a follow-up meeting to be held with the neighbors who are affected to make sure that their concerns are addressed. I don't know how it's going to all end up. I mean, I know that there's a, a lot of serious concerns, but I wanted to at least let you know um, that I'm not the one doing that, but I, I have been following that, and I just wanted to report that to Council. Thank you. I believe that's all, Council. Uh, Penn State students, one thing, we are... There you go. Thank you. We're adjourned. Uh, City Council adjourns at 9.06. Yes. Mr. Winarski, Ms. Allen, Mrs. Errington, Mr. Jones, Mr. Potowski, Mr. Shaw.